Hello and welcome to the Bright Wolf Big Five. So once again, the Bright Wolf Big Five are out and about in Edinburgh, but we've got something quite special lined up for you this time. We are going into the city centre to grab an interview with Rosie, who is from Film Edinburgh. Let's find out what Film Edinburgh can do to help you make your films. Okay, so today we're joined by Rosie. Hi. Hello, hello. And we were just uh, picked Rosie up from the uh, Film Edinburgh offices on uh, the Royal Mile, which is a glorious place in its own right. It certainly is, as many a filmmaker has discovered. It's been very busy with big films. People will have seen it in Avengers and Fast and Furious. I could easily just start talking about, and now we're going down Coburn and Street. And now we're going down Coburn Street. <laughs> and everywhere you go, there's another scene that's been filmed in Edinburgh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, honestly, I mean, especially, you know, the big internationally recognised films, they do, they want to come here because this is, this is recognisable Edinburgh yeah, now. Yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. and they want to show you something that is familiar, but at the same time, not, not uh, New York, you know, they're looking for something that's, that, that's historic and um, that's a little bit, you know, maybe like Rome, you kind of, you, you see a lot of Rome on the TV the, on, on films these days because people know where it is and yet there's something that we haven't seen about it and I think that's what these big international films are looking for when they come here and they, they shoot the Royal Mile and Coburn Street and Victoria Street and, and uh, you know, send these pictures out all over the world for, for audiences, young and old, all over the place and uh, they are very welcome to do so. We well, do enjoy it. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, Rosie, so Film Edinburgh, what's the purpose of Film Edinburgh? Film Edinburgh is the regional film office. In America, they're called film commissions. Our role is to attract and facilitate filming in our local area. We do this through supporting productions with advice about locations. We've got a locations library that commercial productions can, can make use of. These are places that the owners have said we're interested in having filming or just general landscape shots, you know. We've got lists of crew and facilities based here so that productions can come here and entirely crew up without having to bring everybody with them, though they are very welcome too. We work with accommodation providers so that when a production comes and they're looking for advice about where to stay locally that's close to their locations or their base, then we can, we can feed that in. So we deal with road closures, we deal with permits or not, you know, hopefully not, because we like to make it as easy as possible, but where a permit is required, we deal with that. Film office service, it's uh, free at the point of delivery. We do charge productions with 40 or more crew, uh, okay. a small um, admin charge. Just to support the unit. Just to support the unit. But the bulk of the revenue you know, that comes into the council via filming is, is via things like parking and permits and council property use. The film office doesn't charge local production companies, mm -hmm. such as yourself. Yeah, yeah. And it wouldn't charge factual TV, light entertainment, anything with you in other than 40. I mean, it's really aimed at the kind of big, big productions that yeah. need quite a lot of ongoing support over several months. Yeah. So obviously, Edinburgh's been used so many times for so many different productions. Name a few for us. What are some of the big films that have used Edinburgh? People will have seen it in Avengers and Fast and Furious. Played Iceland in Eurovision, the F Fire Saga. There's a scene in the film down in um, New Haven Harbour. It's also about to appear, actually, that location in um, Anansi Boys, which uh, I gather is due out soon. There's a lot of stuff that gets filmed that you just don't know is being filmed, isn't yeah. it? It's quite... I mean, that's the beauty of, uh, mm. of filming. It's quick. Yeah. Uh, you know, no matter how big it is, it's, uh, you know, there'll be loads of prep for, you know, a big Hollywood blockbuster. Yeah. But even then, they're only ever in a location for usually a day or two, and then it's gone. Um, yeah. And then, you know, that's just the Hollywood stuff. And then, you know, we've got everything else that films here all year round. I mean, we maybe have between 300 and 400 uh, filmed productions taking place in the city every year. Yeah. Most of which people are not going to have the, have the slightest inkling about. So yeah. You, you yeah. Know, unless you live there in that street, you you're won't just be aware not going to see it. Yeah. They come and go so fast. Yeah. What size of production should get in touch with you guys at Film Edinburgh? Anything really. I mean, at the film office, we deal with um, commercial productions. So productions that have got a budget. Um, we can't, unfortunately, help with, you know, no budget productions. And of course, everyone 
starts out that way. That's how you learn. Mm -hmm. But our, our remit, first and foremost, is economic development for the city. So that's about making sure that crew are getting hired and paid, that yep. locations are getting a fee um, for their troubles, that kit is getting hired and paid for, um, and that the, the end product is going to it has the potential to, to do some good for the city in terms of promotion and therefore bringing visitors in and spending money when they're here. You know, but that doesn't mean that we're only after the Hollywoods. We, you know, we also work with um, all of the factual TV programs that come here from location, location, location to um, Homes Under the Hammer or Saving Lives at Sea, mm -hmm. or, you know, travel shows, international travel shows, documentaries about witchcraft and wizardry and all that kind of stuff. They all come through us, even if it's just for an initial conversation about what have you got or, you know, they know that they're, they want to film specific things and they want to check out whether or not a permit is required or, you know, how to go about finding parking or, you know, ju just general. It's kind of a little bit at that level, it's a little bit like being a tourist board or something mm -hmm. for filmmaking generally yeah, but yeah. that's fine I mean we're here to provide a service to help a commercial film crews of all shapes and sizes come and uh, have the best experience they can here and get what they need and achieve their goals as uh, efficiently as possible yeah parking in Edinburgh yes What's the story with parking in Edinburgh? Uh, film crews can uh, have a range of options. You can either pay for a parking bay suspension, which is which requires th two or three days notice if it's a permit holder bay. You can organise single yellow line dispensations for your technical vehicles to be able to park on lines, which normally suggest that you can't do anything more than stop on them for more than you know five ten minutes and if you're a large production um, and you need to organize parking before the standard restrictions kick in which is usually about 8 30 in the morning you can organize a, a ttro or a ttrn which is a temporary traffic regulation order or notice which allows us to put in place restrictions that aren't normally there so for instance we could close a road or we could take out parking for an event or for filming over a weekend when normally it's a free-for-all for instance that kind of thing but that, that's a it's a larger scale piece of legislation it yeah. costs more um, you know it's really only used by commercials and dramas yeah. whereas you know your average production just uses a parking dispensation or, or just feeds the meter yeah 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 and sometimes it's easier just if you do oh, it. Oh yeah. yeah, you've yeah. got the freedom to move around yeah, that way. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay, next, next straight question. Closing roads, is it hard to close roads in Edinburgh or is it easy uh, to close them? It's complicated because you need to justify it. You know, so it's not just a way quite fancy that will give us a lot of control. It's like, do you actually need to close it? So we, we need to see the kind of paperwork that explains the health and safety reason why it needs to be closed. Again, it's used by by uh, by drama productions, larger scale productions and, and uh, fairly large commercials that have got action in the road. So for safety, they need to close things or, you know, if they're filling the street with a lot of heavy equipment, again, um, that's the kind of thing we might need to close a road for. It requires at least three weeks' notice, at right. least, and it can cost, uh, you know, a thousand minimum and upwards because you're going to have to hire traffic management people as well as pay for the legislation. So, again, not for the faint hearted. Right, so that's again big productions. Big productions, we'll yeah. Now, if you come to Edinburgh, is there any money at all? Can you get money from the city? The organisation that hands out money is called Screen Scotland. They're part of Creative Scotland. Handing out money is, money is obviously a loose term. If you apply for it, <laughs> you might not get it. Um, but they, they are the funding agency for films and TV programmes and games and animation and documentaries and factual programmes. It's them that have the money. There's no money for production from the council. The council is there to facilitate and attract um, and uh, through our fabulous locations and crew. Mm -hmm. And Screen Scotland is there to support financially the activity. Okay, that's cool, nice and clear. Um, and actually, quite often you can easily get in touch with Screen Scotland. Uh, there's a website, yeah. easy to get in contact yeah. with. Quite often it, it's done through the local production companies who are brought in as partners Absolutely. for big productions. Yeah, yeah. Much easier, yeah. it's much the best way to, to go through. The Screen Scotland is regularly in contact with most of the production companies in, Ed in not just in Edinburgh, in Scotland. Yeah. They know them, they've got track records, it makes apply for money um, so much easier. Also there's two types of money you can apply for from Screen Scotland. There's a production fund which is 
to support Scottish talent, and that's a, a qualitative assessment. Do they want to support that project or not? And it has to be with a Scottish producer, um, director, um, creative talent. Yeah. And then there's a, a sort of incentive fund it's called the Production Growth Fund, and that's about how much money you're spending when you're in Scotland. It's up to, I believe, well, it, it's quite a big chunk of money. It's quite it's big. It's it. quite chunky. Yeah. It's quite chunky, but you've yeah, got to yeah. spend quite a lot to get it. Yes. As well. So yes. it's it's just you've got to hit a certain budget level. Yeah, I think. you do. Yeah. It's a, and it's a you know a kind of return on investment. So but actually filming. Filming anything that's got high production values or yeah. is chosen as a high production value production, you can get film tax credits, which is the UK government yes, thing, on top. Yeah, so which is on lot. top. Yeah, absolutely. So, so there's quite do, a lot. Of yeah, you can get. And in fact, you know, if you're working with a, a Scottish producer, let's yeah, say, yeah. you could apply to the BFI for some UK production funding, yeah. to Scotland for some Scottish production funding, plus. Um, the tax credit for the, the UK credit, yeah, plus yeah. The, the production growth fund in Scotland. Yeah, so there's so it's all about finding the right partner that yeah. can actually guide you through that. Yes, uh, Scottish uh, producers Scottish are your producers. way in, such as your good self. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. <laughs> Down in Leith, we have studio. We do, we have uh, Edinburgh's dedicated um, film TV studio. It has been open since 2020, yep. um, since the start of lockdown. Um, which is great because the first production to move in there was Amazon's The Rig, which moved in during that lockdown year, the end of 2020, and it's been um, in constant use ever since um, by Amazon, by Netflix. Uh, Avengers did it, Avengers. Uh, Avengers used it. Did it, it pre-use it? It okay. sort of pre-used it. Yeah, yeah, they were in there before it was a dedicated film studio. But yeah. when um, when we and Screen Scotland were definitely pushing people towards looking at it as a yeah. really great site and something that could yeah. be a fantastic film studio and uh, yeah but Avengers used it for a, a set of the roof of St Charles Cathedral. 150,000 square feet of build space, we've got offices in there, we've got workshops, we've got loads of um, back lot and uh, parking and it's really it's a fantastic facility for us to have and it's been a real game changer for the city's ability to attract uh, large-scale production and therefore for the city's ability to attract and, and retain crew who want to go to work locally. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, you and I have been here for a long time. For a but, long time. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, there have been many other crew who've just felt that pull to London or Manchester, even Glasgow, um, but and having this here has resulted in us just being able to say, you probably don't have to, actually, this is providing employment for 200 to 400 people. And that's the thing, you know, in this industry, it's hard to, you know, actually have a career yeah. um, where you are, you can have a family life as well. Yeah. It's not well suited to that. So yeah. the, the more film we can get happening in Scotland, the more yeah. places like that will just help. I think help. so make it a more sustainable career for people. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, some people first are going, well, how that's, how's that going to help me? You know, I work in um, uh, in adverts or, uh, you know, I do um, factual TV. That's not, how's that going to help? But it, it does because it, it, what it does is allow, a cr crew will work across genre. Yeah, you know, yeah. The producers tend to specialise, but crew will work across things. And quite often you find that they'll, they want to break after doing a 10 month job on a, on a yeah, high pressure drama and they want to just kind of dip in and out for the rest of the year and just or you know for another six months or something yep. and have a few weeks on a commercial and a little bit of factual and, and so you know they're here now there's more crew to that you can work with who've got a, a huge range of experience and are willing to to do that because of the the life balance that 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 goes along with it and not having to travel i, I mean I, I may be stating the obvious but they're high caliber crew yes uh, you know, incredibly knowledgeable, been doing it for decades and decades, yeah. and are now used to working at the top level for the likes of Netflix, for Amazon, yeah. Uh, yeah. not to mention the BBC Absolutely. and other places in Scotland as well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the crews are really, really high quality and they know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so it's quite a good package. There's a bit oh, of money there if we access it the right way. There's Absolutely. We've there's got great crews, great locations. Great locations. Uh, more facilities are moving here as well, largely yeah. pulled in by the, by the studio and the kind of work that that attracts. Rosie, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. For, it's been really uh, good to talk to you.
It's been good, it's been fun. Yeah. I've learned quite a lot as part of this process. <laughs> Excellent. And more information for anybody that needs it can be found at filmember.org. Yes, that's true, and I look forward to hearing from people. Cool, thank you.